Hi, this video is provided as a service for people that have purchased my Red Hat Certified System Administrator uh, for RHEL 7 course. This course is a complete video course that will teach you everything you need to know to, to pass the RHEL 7 RH CSA exam. Uh, you can get access to this video through Safari Books Online or if you want you can buy it from informit.com. End of the commercial, let's have a look at custom petitioning. If you want to install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 with custom partitioning, you need to go through this interface. This interface is not very intuitive, so let's have a look on how to do it. So I'm assuming that you already know how to start the installation program and that you have arrived here. Otherwise, you can watch my video course uh, on Safari Books Online or on uh, informit.com, for example, for full instructions. So what you need to do is to install the installation destination and if you don't do anything you get default petitioning but you don't want to do default petitioning so you should click I will configure petitioning after clicking I will configure petitioning you don't have to do anything else you just click done just make sure also that a disk is selected on which you want to perform the installation so when you click done uh, the fact that you have selected the default pet a custom petitioning brings you here. So this is the manual petitioning interface. And in this interface you can see what you currently have. This is a VMware disk. So on a VMware disk there's nothing so far. And if you want to add stuff, uh, you can click the plus sign. Now if you are installing on an on a computer that already contains an operating system, like if you want to wipe your Windows installation, you will find something in here. Uh, it will have the name like uh, Unknown Operating System or CentOS 6 Operating System or whatever. What is important before you can continue is that you delete everything that you find here. But in this case I don't have to, to delete anything. So I can just click plus uh, to, to specify what I want to do. Now the first thing it asks for is the mount point. It's a good idea to put boot on a separate partition. It doesn't have to be very big and since this is a 10 gigabyte disk only, I will, I will create 250 megabytes. I click add mount point and add mount point brings me here. Now this is an important interface because in here you will specify everything uh, that you need to create this partition. The important type of information is the, is the device type which is set to a standard petition and uh, that is that is fine because you want to create a standard petition for slash boot if you want to create custom LVM uh, don't do that on boot because uh, that is only s supported in very specific situations so don't do that the file system well the default is XFS uh, so let's just keep it to XFS as it is the default on uh, current Red Hat and CentOS operating systems now the interesting part starts when you want to add a root partition so let's do boot and as a mount point specify slash and let's create uh, the root volume with a size of 4 gigabyte which isn't much but it will do in most situations then you click add mount point and then it brings you here now what you can see here is that the device type is set to LVM you can see that the file system is set to XFS and that it automatically creates a volume group now this part is confusing because you don't want to create a volume group automatically you want to do it manually now what is happening here is that I have created uh, I have specified a 4 gigabyte CentOS root volume uh, to be created so it will automatically create a volume group that is 4 gigabytes as well if you don't like that you can click modify and the modify interface brings you where you can change uh, the size of uh, the volume group now the idea is that if you add additional volumes to the volume group the volume group will automatically grow that is why the size is set to automatic if you don't want to do it automatically, uh, just select fixed. And after selecting fixed, you can specify the size that you want to use, like 8 gigabytes, for example. And then we do save, and at this point, you know for sure that you have 8 gigabytes available uh, in the volume group. 
Uh, next you can click plus and you can add other mount points such as swap. Let's create a swap with a capacity of 256 uh, megabytes. I click add mount point and you'll notice that swap is automatically created in the CentOS volume group. And as we have specified a fixed size for the CentOS volume group, uh, after adding the swap volume, we'll st still have 3.74 gigabytes free. And you can continue adding all the logical volumes that you want, like VAR, for example. And uh, for VAR, depending on what you want, 2 gigabytes is uh, like a nice size. Uh, compared to old versions of Red Hat, you needed to be very specific when creating uh, the, the disks and volumes with regard to the size. The new installer is quite flexible, so it will understand most of the things that you will type. So if it's 2G or 2GB or whatever, uh, that's not a big deal. It will understand you. Now I click Add Mount Point and you can see that it is added to the CentOS volume group as well. So at this point I'm happy, so I can click Done to proceed uh, the installation. Now at this point you will get a lot of information. All the tasks are summarized. Now this summary is not the most easy way to understand what is going to happen on your disk, but uh, it summarizes completely what is going to happen. Imagine what it would look like if on your disk you already had several partitions or logical volumes. You will have a lot of information in this summary. So basically if this is too much for you just click accept changes and it will bring you back to the main installation interface. From there don't forget uh, to go to the software selection and the network hostname. A common error is that people don't go to the network hostname uh, where the, the Ethernet interface by default is uh, disconnected. That doesn't make sense so I'm going to switch it on. And then you can, can click done and customize anything else that you want to be using during the installation. Once, you, once you've done that, just click begin installation to begin the installation. 